regs games, and obviously, you know, we don't play our mutt, but. I know, you know, <laughs> y'all like watching me play regs too, so. <laughs> Alright. We got the depth chart set up. Um, I'm kind of going based off of what I've been doing in reg, I mean, in mutt, but um, also I kind of wanted to make sure that it is as much elbow grease put into it as possible when setting it up. Um, obviously you're gonna start your your top running back and then you want your change of pace back. It's gonna be a little bit different. You want you don't want your top two running backs to be identical in you know how you use them. You want to be able to spell them and change up the direction of how you want to utilize your run game. Fullback, I'm gonna leave him as is. I'm not really gonna change that too much. I mean, I could, but it's not really going to be worth it for real. Um, wide receiver is not really much of a change there. I'm just the only thing that I did different based off of the last time I came and did regs. I don't think Matt Collins was fast enough on the uh, the cut routes on any deep outs that I needed, and it was a bit, it was a bit disappointing. So we're going to rock with Q and Cole. Get me a haircut tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, I know he has the drops open ball trade, but we'll, we'll work with it. Okay. Um, not saying that Matt Collins isn't useful, he is. I mean, he can run block from the receiving position. And with some of the motion hikes that I use, that's gonna be very um, pivotal in how we're gonna run our offense. Um, I know Waller's been kind of just downfalling because of his injury and stuff, but he's still a viable tight end in the game. Um, as far as Lyman go, it's going to be Colton, Parham, James, Illuminor, and Munford. Left end, we're going to put Bilal Nichols since he's not necessarily... I, 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 the reason why I went in with left end is because you want your right end to be that dominant three tech and you'll need agility. So I chose Tillery to be the, the right end and we'll let Bilal Nichols, since he's a little bit stronger, be the left end. Um, also, note that the backup defensive ends are my 4-3 end pass rushers. So I just wanted to kind of make notation of that. So we go left end, you got your left outside linebacker. And then your right end. You put your pass rushers on the outside. In case that you decide to run the 4-3 or any nickel area, defense, you'll be able to have pass rushers in position, you know, to, in, instead of coming out in a four-man front and you just got big slow guys, you know, and you can't get after the quarterback. So you want to make sure that you're versatile in that aspect, in that regard. Um, defensive tackles, we went, we went ahead and put Billings on the inside. I've got three linemen now that, you know, are credible. Um, you know, I got two good three techs, and you know he's the biggest guy that it has decent stats. Um, you can't really use anyone below 70 for real, for real. So you just got to kind of wing it a little bit. As far as my number two and number three, I kept in mind that there may be situations where I'll run the four three six one. So any packages or whatever, if I do any shifts, I want to make sure that that I can get these guys on the inside 
whereas my pass rushers will kind of subdue and become the edge rushers on the outside. <clears throat> Same thing with uh, uh, kind of like what I did with the defensive ends, I did with my linebackers. We'll start with the edge rushers as your predominant starter, and then anything backed up will be your base coverage linebackers with speed. Okay, so we went with Diablo right there. Uh, make sure Perryman's on number two for special teams. Same thing with the right outside linebacker. Make sure you got your pass rusher and then your, your two coverage guys behind him. Cornerbacks is going to be Rockison, Hobbs, Avery, Jones, and Webb. Now I'm going to make a change here. Uh, the problem is I don't have the safeties that I used to have, so I'll probably just run it like that. I mean, it's not going to hurt me for real. I mean, I do miss having Abrams, but... You know, at the end of the day, you just gotta, you know, next man up. As far as your free safety, I'm gonna start Sam Webb. Um, the last time that I was playing regs, Harmon just wasn't it. You know, he's not fast enough. And my biggest decision was this, was between agility and change of direction. And if you're gonna be user in the safety at any point, 76 change of direction is bad. You know, you're, you're gonna get just beat to the sidelines, beat over the top. You know, if, if they're running crossing routes or something, you're just going to be out of position. So I decided to go with Sam Webb primarily as the starter because of the better change of direction, as well as being for a user, he does have 96 jump. So with this in play, we should have Rocky scene, Nate Hobbs with a 93 jump and a safety with 96 jump. So it should be very, you know, intriguing to say the least as far as what I'll be able to do in terms of pass defense. I mean, I'm still going to use Harmon. Like I said, just not using him as a free safety. I'd rather him play more down in the box area, especially if I'm running my big nickel defense. And uh, I think with packages, I should still be able to get pull him out in there. Pull him out is still very good in terms of being a user. He could probably use a few upgrades, but we'll see how that plays out. But having 88 agility over the top is is very good, as well as the 91 acceleration. Now, I know his other stats, you know, he's probably not going to make as many plays as you need him to. But again, you know, just want to make sure that you got something that you can kind of work with. I remember, you know, I talk, talk about rigs. I'm always considering elbow grease, man. you got to rub it. <laughs> you, got, you rub it enough to make it work, right? So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, as far as kicker turn, we're going to go with Turner and Abdullah. Punt return is Keelan Cole. Kick off start, long snapper. Third down running back, we'll use Amir. Power, we'll get Bolden in there so that we can kind of split our carries off. And slot receiver, debating on moving this. So I'm not sure, but we'll see. I might just keep him as is because he got good agility. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep him as is because I don't think we have another high agility player. Because I need good agility to make those catches on the middle when I try to highball it. But that's going to be it. Rush left in, rush right in. Um, you make sure that these are all pass rushers um, in order based off of overall or whatever. You don't really have to sell that anything else out. Um, rush defensive tackles, you're, you're just basically taking your nose out and just putting your two, three techs in. Sub linebackers, I went Diablo and Bolton. The reason why I went Bolton over Brown, primarily because he had better acceleration and I could use her if I wanted. Um, he also has two more, two extra pounds on him, which, you know, is weight and size does play a factor so that we decided to go with that I know his awareness is low so we'll have to be kind of keeping that on um, on our regards but I know his change of direction isn't there but he makes up for that with his 91 what with, with his 90 jump so there therefore we have a 90 jump sub linebacker a 96 jump safety and two 93 jump corners okay 
I prioritize jump a lot in ranks because you're going to have to make up more ground as opposed to mutt where you know your guys are going to cover a little bit better. You don't necessarily need to have you know a high jump to be able to play decent. You know, like if you're dealing with someone playing jump balls, all you got to do is just hit hit them because you should be playing close enough. Um, he had decent decent rush moves, a little bit better than Brown. Decent block shed, um, you know, decent stats for what you can get for playing as a linebacker anyway. But like I said, that 90 jump should make up for it as well as his aggressive ball trait. Um, slot corner, just want to put your best guy in there and then you want to make sure you have a speed guy in there as well. So we'll uh, see how it goes. for the best. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably make a couple of changes though. Things that I have been doing. Kitty, you need to stop farting on me, okay? You can go on now. That's just thing. Alright. And I think as far as what I'm going to do offensively, I'm going to show you guys inside the mind of what I'm thinking about when I'm doing certain audibles. <sighs> I've been seeing some stuff in Gum Bunch that I have like I do like Y curl, I do like bench pivot, I do like halfback base, but I think another play is starting to emerge as a very viable option. I might go back with the with either a Z spot or bunch trail or or the dig. If I if I use the dig as my base, the Z spot works real good with it. So that's just something that you have to Kind of keep in mind. Just kind of look through them real quick, see what we got as far as what we want to do. Um, I got a Z spot and go would be nice. I'm trying to see which ones that I would probably check to more often than next. Because I like. I like the corner routes, but I also like to scheme, like I like whatever route I'm doing, like if I'm doing dig return, I like the motion to scheme real well with what I'm doing. So like I said, I might take that bench pivot off because I don't necessarily, I probably run that as a stock and dig return as a stock and just alternate between those two and then have my audible check down. So what I'll do is obviously I'm not running mesh. Mesh is a no. We'll put probably the bunch trail because you can you can beat multiples. And I probably would like that over Z spot. I'm not sure actually. You know what? Bunch trail be my third stock play. Z spot will be off the dig. Bench pivot. We're going to probably take that out and put, I'm trying to see, I already have a corner out. The dig return is good, so we're going to be scheming off that. I got my Z spot. Probably don't want to go with the play action. Like I said, I already got that corner out, but it does change up a little bit. As far as what you're doing, you use one to be man, the other one to be zone. Um, I'll probably just roll with the bench pivot, probably. Like I said, we'll just use dig return verticals. Take return vertical spacing and bench pivot as our standards. Alright, so we just put bench. There we go. I think that's really all I'm doing. Let me just double check some other stuff real quick. I think I've had some changes in this formation. I'm not sure. Let me see. Um, dun, dun, dun. I like that shark wheel versus like cover two man. Like you get that, that 
double up and out post. I mean, up and in post, if you get a good receiver to run that, especially with Devontae, you're just going to torch cover two man with that shit. Only, only issue I have with it is you're going to have to block the, either the running back or you're going to have to run two tight ends and motion hike block the, the, the drag or something. Like you have to get the extra protection. So either, either or could be in that regard. So like if I motion hiked, you know, I could probably run a deep dig coming in off the ISO receiver. I can motion hike, keep the wheel route, and then just run a drag or something or a little spacing route with the tight end. And then I'll have that, that deep wheel with that post. I could do it like that. Or I could block the running back and then just kind of do my, my, my drive concept read with the drag, dig, and the post. And then you know, we'll, we'll figure something out. I could probably run like a, uh, a in route or something to kind of level them off. Uh, we could, there's a lot of things I can do, you know, I'd be thinking. <laughs> so, um, I like the halfback base, but probably, well, yeah, we'll leave it like that. That should be good. I don't really use too many of these empty sets. I mean, I've played with them, but. I don't really use them too much. Um, there's actually another formation that I was using a lot recently. I'm trying to I think it was Trips tight end. There was actually some very good plays in here that you know basically opened up your what you could do schematically. Um, obviously, what we want to do is we want to build off of this PA shot wheel. Um, Bear with me one sec. I like the base run out of here. That's number one. PA shot will, if you run this to the base side and then you choose not to, you know, use the play action, you do, like they fixed the option route out the backfield for running backs and I was noticing that in, in Mutt and that's gonna make this formation very, 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 very good. Um, I'm just gonna kind of, Try to see exactly what I want to do here. Just remember that the running back in this formation, your your trips receivers needs to be to the field side at all times. You cannot run those to the short unless you flip it. That's the only way you're going to run them to the short side. Other than that, they need to be to the field side. Um, just trying to see what else we got in here that we could work with. That's actually very good. I didn't even know he had that play. That would be very, very good. I feel like a kid in the candy store a little bit. It's a very unique for unique concept. I'm trying to go as much off meta as possible. Like this drive post could be good. Like I said, if you're running this to the boundary side, it'll be good. If you're running this to the field side, it's not going to work. It's just something that you have to um, take note of. Uh, certain plays will be different in this formation. What I mean by boundary and field side, for those ain't you know keen to football terminolo terminology, the field side is going to be the wide side of the field. You're going to have more room over there, but it's going to be further from the quarterback. The boundary side is usually the safe bet to make all your easy reads off of because A, it's going to be closer to your quarterback and then it's going to be closer to the sideline. So if you need to get out of bounds and your guy's a little tired or whatever and you just need to make, make quick plays, that's what I mean to the boundary. So I'm going to start, you know, probably using this formation a little bit more and I'll try to make sure that I kind of keep you guys in loop as far as what you're going to be doing in terms of which way you're going to run it. Um, like I said, like this right here, this would obviously be boundary side would be the right side. So if you're on the right hash, you run it as is. If you're on the left hash, you'd have to flip it. 
like I said, I don't like running boundary to the left because I have a right hand quarterback. So if anytime I'm on the right hash, you know, I'll leave it as is. I like I said, I do not <laughs> I do not like running flip too much versus a situation where I, I have to deal with that. Um, same thing with a slip screen. You could actually run this flipped and let the trips be the boundary side. Um, this formation, same thing. You, you would actually run this flip. Trips would be to the boundary side. And basically you're looking for the route combos to determine you know which way you want to do this. Uh, flood concepts will always be to the boundary side. Okay. You never want to run that as far away from your quarterback because you, those are your primary reads. You don't want to have to make a longer throw to get them, okay? This will be ran to the boundary side. This will be ran to the boundary side. Um, let's see what else there is. You could run this. Yeah, this, this would, yeah most of these would be boundaries. This would be flipped. It's like your screen plays would be the only way that you would run it to the field side. This will be to the boundary side. This will be to the boundary. Let me just double check. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to think. Yeah, this, this would be to the boundary. This would be to the boundary. Depending on who your read is, you could you could run this boundary if you're looking for the tight end and the crosser, or you could run this field if you're looking for the whip and the go. So plays like that, you know, are versatile. You, you don't have to do too much in terms of making those type of reads. I'm I'm kind of intrigued with this wide post though, because you got the in route with the dig, and then you got the corner route. So I'm thinking about that. And obviously, you know, sir, most people, they, they do like motion hikes in this formation. You don't really necessarily need to. I'm just trying to see if there's like anything. Like I could probably kill cover two with that Y post. Just just looking at it, it's like it's designed to kill cover two. And you'd be surprised a lot of people like running cover two. So I might just run, run that Y post to kind of throw people off. You got your trips. I don't run this formation much, but it should be the same way, you know, with between the boundary and the field. Um, you only got nine plays to work with, so if you run stick, that's what that'll be to the boundary side. Like I said, most of these trip formations are boundary, boundary, boundary. <laughs> Very, very rarely would you run anything to the fields because you don't want your your deep route running too far away from your quarterback. Say like verticals would be good to the boundary. Like a lot of these plays, like as long as you know what boundary is, you should be good. Like you could run this flip. Like screens will be flipped to the boundary. So most of these you would run from the right hash, or you would run them as is either either way you know if you're on left hash it would be that side but I, I think primarily I like to run most of my trips from the right hash and then I run them flipped but you know right hash as is unless you get plays like this where you have to run it flipped and then you'll have to still be on that side because if that if your quarterback is right-handed you have to be as close to them guys as possible. You can't force, you know, force them to be too far away from you. So that's just something that you guys need to consider. Uh, you know, I got rid of that tight end screen in that other formation. Let me see if I want to put it back. Because I probably won't even need that drive post, to be honest. I'm trying to think about it. Let me look at it and see. If I'm running this flip, 
tight end should be in space to the left. And then I got that quick out read to her. So yeah, I'll probably run run it off the screen. U trips. I don't really run a lot of U trips. Um, got my play action. Got the red zone scissors. I think we're gonna be good, fellas. I'm just trying to double check a couple formations. Now some of these plays, you want to cancel the play action, bro. Like I've tried running them with the play action. You're not gonna confuse any. Like play action is not gonna confuse every every everyone in the game. You know, people are gonna spam the same defense regardless. Like you'll run into people that run contain 20 times out of 20 times. You're not confusing people with too much play action. Even though I like play action, sometimes you just gotta be like, fuck it, and cancel the cancel the the animation of it because they run contain on you bro the, the play action is not going to work anyway play action is only good if they like to the turbo blitz up the middle that'd be the only time you really even focus on that and then like I said as far as my defense goes we need to get that get that shit together um, I'm not really worried about my audibles or it's three, four odd. I do use quarters. I use match, match, match defenses in my three, four where I can. You know, it's like you're not gonna get them too much because they gutted the playbooks out. But like I said, wherever you can find a spot to put match coverage in, do. Kitty, I'm, 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 I'm like no. <laughs> like no why you keep jumping on me I don't know alright so we got quarters cover six invert for crossers I'm debating between these two I might keep the regular cover six for short crossers and then I'm trying to debate Probably want, to, like, probably want to just take this one out and then just put my cover three scene. I do use some cover three matches. I don't use them all. Probably just go. I don't like stop cover six. I got quarters for that. I don't, you know what, let me take that quarters off. Let me put, I want to say cover nine because that's going to put that sub linebacker in that curl flat where I like. Cover six, no, cover six is going to put that safety in the curl flat. Which is, I think that's better. That linebacker is not going to have the zone coverage to play that cover nine hook quarter flat. Um, baiting on the trap. I think that trap might be better because it'll match up. And then if I want to put the cloud on there, I can use or adjust the cloud. We got the three seams. So that'll be our big nickel over G. We'll run stock palms. I don't really run. Uh, I want to run this formation. Like I said, it's all about personnel and what you got on the table. Uh, for a while, I was running the cover zero, so... It was seeming to be very effective. Assuming you don't deal with people that I think I think what got me tired of regs for a minute was I would play people with the custom playbooks and they would do the stupid shit where they would come out and play. They would motion a receiver. They would audible. They'd motion another receiver. And you know, they would try to glitch you out and shit. It's like that. 
I was like, nobody got time for that, man. I'm just play football. I'm not trying to cheat. Uh, like I said, I like match quarters. I know cover six, that's going to be a cloud on the field. Probably might just run with the invert, but they don't have the cover six invert and nickel normal anymore, so that's, that sucks. You could ran a perfect crosser defense in that. And like I say, you don't really have too many options anywhere else. I mean, you got your three cloud, you got your cover six, but yeah, they took they took the inverts out. <laughs> it's just like we're not gonna let you like big nickel. That's why you need big nickel because you don't have your crosser defenses. You know, I mean, you could run this two trap maybe. You could probably run a three cloud, you know, and you really just got to put your elbow grease in, in, into thinking about things of what people like to do. You're either three cloud or cover six. I'm probably going to run cover six from this formation because I don't think three cloud's it. Three, three cub. This is actually a match quarters. Try to stay with as much cover. See, they don't have a regular cover three match. I mean, you got a match here, but you're missing another hook zone. So you'd have to put a vertical, you'd have to put two vert hooks on there and take that, that mid read zone off. And I don't even know if you could put a vert hook on that guy. So that's why, like I said, I like to, I like to have, my cover three needs to be able to defend the seams. You know, so I don't get hit hit up the seams, and they don't have a legitimate cover too. Like this Boca Blitz too. This shit's so buggy. You okay, kitty? You over there sneezing like you got a dang alarm or something? But I think I think that is it. Like I don't really like running cover two for real. Unless I'm just dealing with someone that likes to run out routes a lot, like like I like I like to run, but you don't see a lot of people doing that. Um, I might just go with his cover one blitz. That way I can defend the flat instead of going cover zero. Might do it like that. I know I said a lot of these I went. I can't run this flip. This one I'll just go straight cover zero. I'll be content with that. You know, like I said, a lot of these I do like cover zero with, like this overshoot pinch is a good cover zero. They don't have see they got a cover three seam here. They got a two invert. They don't have a two sink. Like they took the sink defenses out. So you really just gotta find your niche. Since I'm already running cover six, I might do cover three scene here. I know I don't run a lot of cover three, but there are situations when you need it, primarily as a run defense, just because, you know, those, those scene, scene flats are very good at using like the, the, the hidden traits, like the spin moves and stuff. Those are very good, especially if you can get them on the line. I think that's going to be it, fellas. That's what your defense is going to be in a nutshell. Like I said, they gutted the playbook. That's why, for the most part, I try to run everything out of big nickel that I can, you know. Only only time you'll see me come out in like a 3-4 or something is in goal line situations. I, I can't run the goal line the way I want to run it because they don't have zone coverages in the game. For it. Like they, they don't take care of home, bro. Like they, like I said, they cut the playbook. You got to use the elbow grease. Like I said I ain't played this in who knows how long. Shit won't even load up. <laughs> 
don't even know if I'm still ranked. I ain't played this shit in so long. Yeah, I'm still I'm still ranked. <laughs> and I'm still ranked, so we good. That's crazy. Like I I put that much work in it from being a top ten player. And I haven't played it that much lately. And, you know, because I've been playing mud. And that's crazy how I'm still ranked. And I haven't even been playing this shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I went down maybe like 100 or so, but you gotta stop farting on me, cat. That's just disgusting. I don't want no kitty cat poop on me. I don't need someone to walk on my back. I got these fucking pain. I can't pop it. I'm not sure if it's a muscle or if it's my bone that needs to pop. I don't know. Ugh. EA Sports coverage of the What's going on, my guy? To legendary Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Green Bay Packers. All right, let's see. Let's see where we at. We played this shit. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Lambeau. Fielded just outside the goal line. Woo! Hey, man. Hey. Perriman said, what's up? Alright, so that'll give him in the box. You can't have. 30 got played down. 30 got played down. We're not, we're not letting him be anywhere on the top. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron no Jones. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Second down, another shot for Jones. He'll be Probably back, down back, back to 33, five yards on the play. They'll just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. They'll try and run for it with Jones. Tackle. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Forced out to his left. That's taken in by the tight end, Josiah DeGuara. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 15 there, and the Packers have a first. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 46. Rodgers going to throw. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And they're going to work this down to about the 32. You're going to get tired running a no-huddle offense and regs. This is just not what it used to be. It's going to hurt the offense more than it's going to hurt the defense. side of the ball held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe standing in that place yeah that's good for a gain of six and that'll leave him with a third and two that's a staple of this offense drag route to the tight end yeah he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch but still an effective gain nonetheless and Told you I can sub my D line. Have the first down as they stop him short. A loss no of a yard and it brings up fourth. A great job there by this defense. They give up the long Got drive, but in the end, it looks like they'll force what, a field goal attempt. Is fresh. Now 
Now to whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. The kick by Crosby is good. And the Packers are up to a 3 nothing guys. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating these first guys downs spent. does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Nice Manola on the left hash. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And this one's incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now Carr. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if you don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Uh, yeah, you know, he's got to kind of work with what you got. Midfield, here's Carr. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Line is not as what ought to be good. the final play of this first quarter. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop it for an eight yard loss. Gotta imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. To throw, it's Carr. And he fires one that's low pass. Come on. Adrian Amos with a pick. And the Packers are going to take possession of the football. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field. And a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Give him 19 there as the drive marches forward. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. 
I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. And the Packers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Now the Packers are going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Now Jones, and he'll take this into the end zone. I don't think Sanders is a Aaron Jones, a five-yard touchdown run. Like and they're able order. to add on to their advantage. And now it's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live foot. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. He's at the 30. 10, 5, and he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. Well, you figure with a veteran kicker out there, these extra points almost automatic. But this last time, he's probably should use a better route runner for what I was trying to do. Put it on him. I think there was a breakdown in the had protection. But guess what? That, it does that go against guy. his record. And yeah, he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. set to get this drive started here comes another drive from this unit and Charles they're coming off a costly mistake on the last possession an interception in a game that is very close right now well as we know they all sting no matter what the situation but in a one possession game that'll hurt a little bit more but this is an excellent opportunity to make up for it on this drive I just don't expect them to try and take huge gambles to make up that momentum in a hurry and this one too low. This is a half for not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. They'll go for it. It's Carr. And it's incomplete. Really? They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So certainly an interesting call really? there to go for it. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. forward for about four second and six two minutes remaining in this first half of football hey, here's Jones again on second down it's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. They'll go again to Jones, and he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They'll run wide side with Jones. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Rodgers now to throw. Buying time to his left. And this one incomplete through a down to the back receiver. To the it's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Robert Tunyon, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Packers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. 
So now Rodgers will lead the Packers up to go for two. Rodgers will throw for it. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Popular down near the goal line. Quick slant. Nice job there to get in. All right, guys, let's not drop balls out here. Let's not do that. Is to make sure your offensive linemen use their leverage to get the hands of the defensive front down so you can throw it through that little bit of crowd and get it to the receiver. In this event, they did, but a nice play by the defender knocking it away. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump starting. I'm your team. With that, you man. just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you gotta figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Meanwhile, Carr's throw taken in by Adams. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings most up forward. Like on car, like I feel the difference. Like the quarterback is a lower overall. Are going to go on fourth down. Just drop balls or. Oh, Adams! What a great He's got this almost to the forty this shit before shit going make. out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten on play action. Now Carr. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. Play action. Now it's Carr. Low ball. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Let's try to get something out of it. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Carlson able to put this one through. Yeah, there is a big we'll difference. Like in my best play our wins. So we've hit intermission. It's this time. Rating is the NFL. Is the and it's a presentation you know, the guy of the high enough to beat him traffic. This one's not going to make a play. Crosby on now to kick it away. You basically, this right you sub people the in to give your guys that can make plays a great and you don't sub to people away, in to get him down <laughs> make them the make plays. It's not going to happen. It's just observation. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. In the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively. CD down two scores here. So how do they make some change? This is Lob pass. Picked off by Come on now. Stokes. Be over the are gonna take possession of the football. But that was gonna, gonna catch a lot of pass on me when I got possession on it. And you have like to say that's the best in the score, right? They spent a lot of time to do their checklist of what they wanted to accomplish to start this third quarter. Turning it over like this was not on that list. Not at all. You, and you come out of the Lock locker room trailing, and that first drive to establish momentum is very key. Crucial. So they're not going to let me make that. So, so after try. the INT, it's Rodgers. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route. Just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up Rick. And it's a Packers touchdown. Robert Tunyon. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the better Packers player, are able to strike quickly player, to add on to their lead. Team is not Matt LaFleur, he tells right the now. offense, stay out there, go for two. 
They're going to run for it with Jones. And he will get into the end zone. This sucks. We try it, honestly. Now after the touchdown, See, uh, here's Crosby my team to like, kick it I away. enjoy Mutt because my guys make the plays that I put on the field. This shit. They'll elect to bring it out here for the end Dropping balls when they be wide open. And, and he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped he at really the 17. Gotta, short field might be the guess. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand that's what they should have had earlier, man. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Throwing on first down is Carr. And a pass complete to Waller on the out route. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Carr going to throw. Will be incomplete. Oh, Hollins, bro, you gotta make a play, my guy. Like, I can't have you out there just not working for me, okay? Like, seriously. Go out there and make a play on the ball. That's embarrassing. Green Bay, Wisconsin is the spot. Third quarter inside Lambeau. Glad you're with us. Second and ten. Now, Carr again. Why are you running behind the line scrimmage? And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Adams the man in motion left. Not do no more of those. Throwing his car on third down. He goes right back to Adams. That's complete. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be fourth down. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Car to throw for it on fourth down. And he's going to be intercepted yeah, a third time. Hard. He made no Jonathan throws, Abram picks it. And the Packers are going to I'll take try one more, man. I'm going to go back doing my, my other stuff like this. It's just horrendous. You need a quarterback to be rated like 88 just to make the throws. Because if not, he's going to throw them short. It's annoying. And I, I, I Chandler Jones not that guy. That's obvious. So I'm probably going to change my uh, my pass rush situation. Like I'll still use him as a base, you know, because he can still block shit. But in terms of you know pass rush, I I need him to be able to finesse. Like he cannot not finesse and then just keep getting whiffed on blocks. So we're just going to put Furl over there. Uh, he's got better speed, so I know his finesse move might not be the same, but speed kind of amplifies off of that. Just try to see what else we have in terms of finesse. I mean, Koontz was okay, but we're going to rock with Farrell because that was an embarrassing effort by Chandler. <sighs> Speed matters in regs, I guess. You can't do no finesse if you ain't got like 80 plus speed or something. I don't know. Dude just wasn't able to do what I was able to do in my. Wasn't getting out of him the production I expected. Not saying he's bad, he's just not going to be in my nickel defense anymore.